they are not providing hard copy braille tests anymore. They've just completely discontinued that for this year. They are reluctant to provide or will not provide, refusing to provide tactile graphics. Introducing Kaylee Brandle. They're asserting that they are accommodating us fully and that the exams are going to be tough for everyone in these difficult times, but they've out front told TBIs that yes, your students won't do as well. High school student, an advocate, and determined. I recently filed two class complaints against this organization, one with the United States Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights that was filed on Sunday, and then one with the United States Department of Justice, which was filed on Monday. Not just a future leader, but already a leader for the blindness community. Deafblind students are completely at a loss because the only solution that they have been providing is audio. They can't hear that. Like, how are they supposed to access that material if they don't have a focus 40? For more podcasts with the blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com, on Twitter at blindabilities, and download the free Blind Abilities app from the App Store and Google Play Store. That's two words, blind abilities. And now... From the Blind Ability Studios, please welcome Kaylee Brandle. By June, we are hoping to have the accommodations that they deserve, and they should not have to muscle through an exam that is not in their mode of learning and that is not accessible to them. Welcome to Blind Abilities. I'm Jeff Thompson. You may recall a couple episodes back, Blind Abilities teen correspondent Simon Bonifant and some high school students talked in a roundtable format about the impact that the lockdown and distance learning is having on them, as well as the challenges they face. One of the students attending the roundtable was Kayleigh Brendel, and now she, as well as all blind, low vision, deaf blind, deaf, and hard of hearing face another challenge, one with advanced placement exams with the college board. She's taking it to a higher level. She's going through the courts and going to make her voice heard to help all of us in the blindness community and especially students who want to have equal access to the advanced placement exams just like everyone else. So without further ado, here's Kaylee Brendel. Kaylee, thank you for taking the time and coming on to Blind Abilities. How are you doing? Good. Thank you very much for having me on here. Kaylee, I'm sure the last few weeks have been quite interesting for you, maybe distracting. So tell us what's happening. So all over the world, students are preparing to take the advanced placement exams, which would allow them to both bypass their finals for the course for the year and have a chance at receiving college credit. But the college board, the organization that creates and administers these exams, is not accommodating blind and deafblind students correctly. They've, in fact, revoked some of our accommodations recently without informing any of the recipients of those accommodations. And they've also insisted that during these unprecedented circumstances, they are accommodating us the best that they can. But they are not providing hard copy Braille tests anymore. They've just completely discontinued that for this year. They are reluctant to provide or will not provide, refusing to provide tactile graphics. They are revoking the breaks as needed accommodation in our plans. And they are also revoking the one-on-one human reader accommodation, which would allow TBI or para to help the student in terms of reading the exam or scribing for them. And then since the exams have been digitized this year to deal with the coronavirus circumstances, they've made it clear that any time a student takes to resolve an issue presented by their unique accessible technology, any time that they use to do that will detract from the amount of time they have to take the test. That could be five minutes, that could be 30 minutes, that could be an hour. But however long it takes, you have that much less time to complete your exam. It seems absurd to have someone take a test without the accommodations that one is familiar with or used to doing and probably has been already approved to be done that way. I don't see how they can assume that accommodations are being met. Not at all. And they're asserting that they are accommodating us fully and that the exams are going to be tough for everyone in these difficult times, but they've out front told TBIs that yes, your students won't do as well. Yeah. And yet the students sitting right next to you in class today, well, virtually (laughs) right next (laughs) to you today has full access and can go take these advanced placement exams. Kaylee, tell us what the advanced placement exams are and how they benefit you. So if you were to receive, it's on a one to five scale, five being the highest score you can receive. And if a student receives, say, a four or a five, they would be able to bypass that course in college. And certain colleges would exempt them from having to take it again and utilize that score 
as college credit. So your completion of the course is validated by your performance on this exam. It's got to be an accurate testament to what you know. And in our case, it's not because they're not assessing us in the proper way. And how many tests do you plan on taking? I'm currently scheduled to take four. I've taken four AP classes this year, and I signed up to take all four AP exams. So that could eliminate you going for nearly a whole semester of college. Yes, yes. And I'm taking four more next year. So by the time I am a freshman in college, I could, I could, in theory, attend as a sophomore, like begin as a sophomore. Which is cost-wise, that makes a big difference in how much it costs to go to college, especially since the sighted students or students that who do not need accommodations can do it, be done with it, and they just eliminated a year of college. Exactly. And we have compensated college work. Like these exams are not cheap and they do cost money. And in our accommodation plans that college board officials agreed to, it stipulated that we have hard copy braille, we have these tactile graphics, and they've just decided that all these accommodations are null and void. And they think that what they're giving us now is sufficient, like a one size fits all kind of mentality. What kind of line of communications are you getting from the college board? None. I spoke with a couple college board officials last week, but since I've taken action, I haven't heard from them as of late. I spoke with Christine Lowe, who's the director of accessible digital testing, that department. And then I've spoke with Nancy Kim, who works in the Department of Services for Students with Disabilities. And both of their responses regarding technology were very disconcerting because they both said, well, you know what? You should use a device with less problems. That's it. And I was trying to explain to them <laughs> that's not quite possible for students who utilize accessible technology because these challenges presented by these devices are unforeseen. You can't anticipate in advance which device is going to malfunction. So for them to suggest that as a solution suggests that they don't really understand the problem. But they're making decisions. Mm -hmm. So you took action. I, along with the National Federation of the Blind and four other students that this impacts, although there are likely hundreds around the world, College Board would have that data, we do not. But I recently filed two class complaints against this organization, one with the United States Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights that was filed on Sunday, and then one with the United States Department of Justice, which was filed on Monday. And NFB joined you? Yes, NFB is behind me. What's the difference between the two actions? With regards to the class complaint filed with OCR, there are specific legal statutes that they cover. They cover Title II of the ADA and they cover Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. We needed them to cover Title III of the ADA because that pertains to high stakes testing. A lot of college boards leverage is that they are not governed by the IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. They're just governed by ADA. But Title III, they are in violation of Title III, and they are also in violation of Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act because they receive some federal funding. So we needed an organization that would recognize Title III, but since that's not under OCR's jurisdiction, and since Department of Justice is more equipped to deal with private entities, such as the College Board, we decided to file with them as well. And so what's the process that's happening right now then? We've received a case number from OCR, DOJ forwarded me an auto-generated email explaining the process and what would proceed forward if they found what I'm alleging to be accurate. But as for right now, we have not received any immediate response. I plan to follow up with both organizations. They provided me contact information that I could utilize if I wish to expedite the requests, which of course I do because exams have already started. And case in point, the AP calculus exam was yesterday and there was a blind student who both of the questions, two out of two questions, revolved around graphs that he could not see or access. So his interpretation of these images is going to make up the entirety of the score. And that's not an accurate assessment of what he knows. And he's very fearful about how that will look on his transcript. Mm. Yeah, graphs. The other point that I think is very important is who's determining what the graph looks like when they give their perspective of it. I mean, you can't just have a parent do it or just a, you know, a reader from off the streets, if I may, dive into physics, calculus, chemistry. Oh, that's their suggestion. That's what they've already suggested. Like, oh, just have a family member do it. But they don't know the context of the image and they don't know how to describe a calc exam or a slope field or a, a phospholipid bilayer on my biology exam. Like, that's not fair to ask of them, especially in certain student circumstances. I know a student that was dealing with this and his family his brother and his mother are both visually impaired. So how are they supposed to describe that? Like they're not able to see it. So they wouldn't be able to describe it or help the kid out. So it seems as senseless as sending Dorothy to get the witch's broom. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And 
it's it's unfortunate in the sense that we paid for these exams and they began production in November. And in order to combat these circumstances, they totally started over in terms of creating new tests. They created entirely new tests from scratch and they're shorter than the tests they were previously going to administer to students in my position and all positions, frankly. And they have the braille for the old test. But the problem is the old test revolves around content that my faculty at my school and other schools across the world didn't get to teach yet. They modified the new test to reflect the fact that not all the content in the course was covered. So they were unable and unwilling to create Braille for this new test. But we've accumulated the resources to do so in less than a week. I would say three days. There was a company that I got in touch with called Willis Touch Braille. And they're a transcription company. And they are ready and willing to emboss this material if College Ward were to provide it. But they're fearful of cheating. They think that we will cheat and have the exams for too long and have access to these exams for longer than our cited counterparts would. But NFB, along with many other students, have provided multiple solutions. And every single one of them has been denied or dismissed. Hmm. So they're actively, <laughs> basically, just denying accommodating. Exactly. They, they feel that because what they are doing is they have made the test accessible to screen readers such as JAWS, VoiceOver, NVDA, and Chromebox. But certain browsers such as Internet Explorer will not work with the test. And they've provided vague descriptions of the graphs, but they are not sufficient. And their position is that, well, we've accommodated you, even though it's not the way we learn, it's not the way we should test, and it's not nearly adequate. Their position is that, oh, no, you're completely accommodated. Hmm. So when they actually redid all these tests, they did not bake in any accessibility at all into the ingredients. Exactly. Maybe digital. Yeah, they, they attempted to. And the, their argument is that, oh, well, you do have Braille if you have access to a refreshable Braille display, such as a Focus 40. But the problem is some students don't have access to a Focus 40 and thus do not have Braille at their disposal. Thus, they would need it embossed. Yeah, we, we need it embossed. And this is something that happens every day at a school for accommodations. This is what you're used to. You're not going beyond what you would expect for accommodations. I'm asking for what they originally approved me for. I have, and many of their students have access to our original accommodation plans validated by College Board. That is what we were supposed to receive. Under normal circumstances, I would have gotten a Braille test with tactile graphics. I would have had breaks as needed written in so that if eye strain or finger fatigue to Attracted from my performance and I would have been able to stop the clock. Now they're saying that would work against me if I took a break because of my disability or any of our disabilities. And I also would have had a one-on-one -on -one reader there. And they've just decided that none of those accommodations are going to be enforced anymore. And this is something, yeah, like you said, you know, you plan on this, you get your accommodations accepted, you're moving forward with your education, and all of a sudden this roadblock comes up and just not affecting you, but anybody with visual impairments is going to suffer from this. Exactly. And deafblind students are completely at a loss because the only solution that they've been providing is audio. They can't hear that. Like, how are they supposed to access that material if they don't have a Focus 40 and they can't see? Braille is their mode of learning completely. That's why I've extended my complaint to include deafblind children, because I personally know one deafblind student who had to drop out. There was no way for him to do it. Oh, wow. I know when you first contacted me, I sent an email to the college board, and I got the auto response. They'll get back to me in three to five days. Well, that's come and gone, and haven't heard from them at all. Yeah, they've just been completely silent. And I saw that you put a video out there and that's gone viral. It has. We have, I think, 87,000 views and then 300,000 total interactions. And then I recently put out a poll because I want to get some actual feedback. Does College Board have the right to discriminate against blind AP students? And we've gotten so many responses saying, no, no, of course not. Like, how could they ever think they do? How can people find the video? My Twitter handle is at live with Kaylee, and that's K-A-L-E-I-G-H. So if they were to look on my tweets and reply section, they would see it. And they could also find the poll there. And they would also see the poll. That's a great video. Mm -hmm. I had someone describe it to me, and you're using your Focus 40 as you're talking. And you're a good speaker, good reader. It doesn't even seem like you're reading something. It exemplifies that with the right access, you could actually do well. It's a great video. Thank you. Thank you very much. You mentioned that you're going to take four tests and that. What, what's your goals in college? 
I would like to pursue a degree in law. After completing college, I want to go to law school. I'm not exactly sure which concentration of law I would like to pursue just yet, but I know that I want to advocate and I know that I want to ensure that everyone's voice is heard. If it's in environmental law, if it's in disability advocacy, wherever it is, I want to make sure that I do my clients a service. Law would be the career and advocating would be your lifetime journey. (laughs) <laughs> it true. is. It's an uphill battle for most of us. Ever since I got involved, it's always been a battle. And involving the NFB, this is something that I really appreciate the NFB for, is when they find that something's affecting the whole blindness community as a whole, they're on it. They got people in place and they really go to action for you. All right. I actually have a call with President Urgabono later and several students that this is impacting because we're discussing what to do if the class complaints we've filed don't have the desired effect in the limited amount of time we have. So we're discussing next steps. What would you tell the listeners right now what they can do to help this movement? Many students don't even know that this is a problem. So the greatest thing that you could do is ensure that no blind or deafblind student begins to take their AP exam without knowing full well that they're being denied certain accommodations and that they have the right to file for a makeup date in June. They have the right to ignore their e-ticket, which would automatically get them a makeup date in June. And by June, we are hoping to have the accommodations that they deserve. And they should not have to muscle through an exam that is not in their mode of learning and that is not accessible to them. That's good information. Thank you. What advice would you give a transition student who is looking forward to going to college? As a junior myself, I can't speak to what college experience is like, but I would assert to this student, follow what your passion is. You know the skills that you've developed over the course of your primary and secondary education. You know what you're good at and follow that because the money will follow that. If you have a career that makes you happy and that fulfills you, the money will follow. So ensure that you receive the best education to prepare you. And that doesn't even have to be from a top tier school. I'm applying for Ivy League schools, but wherever makes you happy and wherever gives you the best accommodations that you deserve and that you should have access to, that's going to be the best fit for you. Good advice. Rumor has it you're a pretty good singer too. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, I was actually working on an album before this all started. (laughs) Just an album. Yeah, just, just an album. Just a little album. Well, that's great, Kaylee. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time coming on. And we're going to get this message out right away so everyone can get involved and let your voice be heard. And you're doing a great job for the entire blindness community from students all the way to adults that, you know, getting accommodations that you deserve is something worth fighting for. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all the help you've been in ensuring that students know about this. Such a great young leader and such a great interview. Kaylee Brendel. Be sure to contact your state services for the blind, your voc rehab, and find out what they can do for you. Live, work, read, succeed. A big shout out to Chi Chow for his beautiful music. You can follow Chi Chow on Twitter at El Chi Chow. And most importantly, I want to thank you, the listener. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. And until next time, bye bye. When we share what we see through through each each other's other's eyes, eyes, we can then then begin begin to bridge bridge the the gap between between the limited limited expectations and the reality reality of blind abilities. abilities. For more podcasts with a blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com. On Twitter at Blind Abilities. Download our app from the App Store, Blind Abilities, that's two words. Or send us an email at info at blindabilities.com. Thanks for listening.